Premier Danielle Smith is calling out Justin Trudeau's epic leadership failure, and it is scathing. She says that Trudeau lost control of his radical environment minister, Stephen Gilbo, who's pushing crazy, unrealistic green goals that punish hardworking families. After demanding citizens buy electric cars, Trudeau then refused to build the roads to support them. It's sheer hypocrisy. Meanwhile, Gilbo viciously attacks industries that keep food on our tables while picking fights everywhere. Yet Trudeau doesn't even try to restrain his rogue minister. And if that's not bad enough, Trudeau shamelessly claims voting conservative puts your kids at risk of COVID earlier. A ludicrous fear tactic. Premier Smith brings the fire, saying Trudeau just won't cooperate to find solutions. While she's trying to unite Canada, Trudeau drives dangerous divisions. He empowers extremist ministers to push harmful agendas and makes baseless claims to stoke fear. Trudeau's reckless leadership risks tearing Canada apart. He needs to get in line before it's too late. This scorching criticism reveals a PM who lost his way. While Smith works for Canadians, Trudeau pursues politics of division. His circus of chaos is getting out of control. How much more will we take before his epic failure costs Trudeau everything? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Premier Danielle Smith is exposing Justin Trudeau's monumental leadership failure and her criticism is scorching. Trudeau lost oversight of his extreme environment minister, Stephen Gilbo, who's demanding impractical green targets that penalize everyday citizens. Well, you know, I wanted to give the prime minister the benefit of the doubt that uh, he had just made a decision to put Stephen Gilbo in the environment ministry and that he wanted to give him the latitude to bring policy forward. But, I, but a leader also has to know that when their minister is um, going off in a direction that is harmful to the country, harmful to national unity, when they're proposing policies that are unachievable and impractical, when they're creating that kind of division. After insisting citizens purchase electric vehicles, Trudeau then declined to develop the infrastructure to support them. It's total hypocrisy. Meanwhile, Gilbo mercilessly condemns industries that put food on families' tables while igniting conflicts everywhere. Yet Trudeau won't lift a finger to control this out-of-control minister. While spending remains in check under Smith's prudent leadership, Trudeau splurges recklessly. He drives dangerous divisions as Smith tries to unite Canada. Smith aims to grow Alberta's Heritage Fund to $250 billion, while Trudeau ignores Canada's rainy day needs, and he still uses Alberta as his punching bag despite Smith's fiscal restraint. We can't spend every single dollar today on today's needs and wants. We have to start putting money aside so that we're preparing for what the world might look like in 20 or 30 years, Smith told reporters of a school's announcement in Calgary on Friday. This scorching criticism reveals a PM who lost his way. While Smith works for Canadians, Trudeau pursues politics of division. His circus of chaos is getting out of control. Trudeau empowers extremist ministers to push harmful agendas and makes baseless claims to stoke fear. His reckless leadership risks tearing Canada apart. While Premier Smith judiciously manages Alberta's finances, Prime Minister Trudeau spends recklessly with little forethought. My finance minister is nervous because we don't know what oil and gas prices are going to look like over the coming years. He and I are highly motivated to find that new revenue source, that investment in the Heritage Savings Trust Fund, said Smith. Smith is putting $2 billion into Alberta's Heritage Fund this year and aims to grow it to replace volatile resource revenues. But Trudeau ignores federal rainy day funds, leaving Canada vulnerable. And while Smith reserves a reasonable $2 billion for wildfire contingencies, Trudeau spends without limit. He acts like budgets don't matter. Last year's $2.9 billion wildfire costs were an anomaly Smith acknowledges. Still, she responsibly ensures a reserve for typical costs. Meanwhile, Trudeau writes blank checks as if disasters can be fully prevented. While Smith unites provinces and finds pragmatic solutions, Trudeau needlessly divides the country. He refuses to collaborate with premiers like Smith rejecting any advice. Trudeau pushes ahead with half-baked ideas, fingers in his ears as Canada drifts aimlessly. He achieves nothing substantial while Smith works diligently to advance Alberta. On the other hand, Justin Trudeau's unbalanced response to carbon tax criticism from Polyev also reveals deeper flaws in his fiscal leadership. When Polyev cited PBO data showing the carbon tax at high costs, Trudeau responded with an angry, distracted rant. He deflects accountability for his own excessive spending and misplaced priorities. Whoa! I don't need to, he doesn't need to get angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just asking some numbers here. Just some numbers. Right? So he was very anxious to talk about these wonderful rebates up until a moment ago. And now he doesn't want to say a thing about it. He even gave him a fancy new name. I'm going to say it again. 
in Ontario, the gross cost of the carbon tax is $1,674 for the average family. $1,674. How much is the rebate? Yet when concerned voices highlight his spendthrift habits, Trudeau responds with emotional outbursts, not reasoned solutions. He gets mad when confronted about frittering away money on marginal items while neglecting critical needs. A responsible leader would redirect funds to urgent areas and not become unhinged when questioned. Trudeau's reflexive defensiveness shows he lacks financial discipline and accountability. While Premier Smith carefully steers Alberta's coffers, Trudeau abdicates oversight of federal spending. When taken to task, he angrily deflects instead of correcting course responsibly. His fiscal imprudence risks leaving Canada unprepared for mounting challenges. Trudeau angrily claims Canadians care about climate change above all else. But Premier Smith understands citizens have diverse priorities, with climate being just one concern. While Trudeau spends recklessly on climate initiatives, Smith prudently reserves funds for pressing needs like wildfire readiness. She knows hope isn't a prudent budget strategy. Trudeau wants to force climate as the prime concern. But Smith recognizes, like Pierre Polyev, that citizens also care about inflation, health care, jobs, and affordability. Climate matters, but it isn't the only issue. Yet when leaders like Smith and Polyev suggest balanced perspectives on climate policy, Trudeau fumes. He misleadingly acts as if anything less than climate obsession is denial or indifference. ...about climate change. They see the wildfires cutting across this country last summer that are already started up uh, in Alberta. He sees the droughts, they see the floods. They have no plan. Their plan is to withdraw the, uh, the, the four times a year checks that land of Canadians that the Parliamentary Budget Officer uh, demonstrates uh, gives more money to 8 out of 10 families right across the country in jurisdictions where it's applied. Mr. Speaker, we have a plan. He doesn't. In truth, Canadians hold nuanced views on environment policy. They want climate action but also care about energy jobs and their family budgets. Smith understands this balance. She sees climate change as an important challenge but one that requires pragmatic solutions, not angry virtue signaling. Trudeau's exaggerated climate rhetoric divides Canadians. Smith and Polyev aim to have reasoned debates on environmental policy, not divisive shouting matches. There are no easy answers on complex issues like climate change. But Trudeau's insistence that it transcends all else rings hollow to everyday citizens just trying to get by. Yet Trudeau has the audacity to accuse Polyev of having no climate plan when in truth the PM is the one who dodges accountability and lacks substantive policies. His climate change projection reveals a prime minister with no actual solutions. Adding to all of these issues, there are others coming every day with Trudeau. Trudeau sinks deeper into delusion as he announces two more toothless housing agreements. He claims they will fix affordability, then has the audacity to say Polyev lacks housing plans. This comes after eight years of Trudeau's empty housing promises. He loves signing contracts and cutting ribbons while nothing gets built and no problems get fixed. Polyev rightly slammed Trudeau for endless talking without meaningful action on housing. While Trudeau prattles on, home prices soar ever further out of Canadians' reach. Indeed, the only one gatekeeping this progress is the Conservative leader himself. He pretends he hasn't been in government for the last eight years. He, he acts like this is his first day on the job, Mr. Speaker. In fact, that he has to read off notes would suggest it is his first day on the job. But the reality is that housing costs have doubled since he promised to lower them. Yes, he's created massive programs with wonderful new agreements and beautiful photo ops where politicians pat each other on the back and smile while they cut ribbons. The problem is that after eight years, nothing is getting built. Why won't the Prime Minister get out of the way, cut the bureaucracy, so we can build the homes? His latest meaningless agreements will accelerate nothing. Without substantive policies, Trudeau just piles up worthless memorandums. It's time to move beyond announcements and get shovels in the ground. But this requires decisiveness Trudeau lacks. Trudeau was hopelessly stuck in an endless planning loop. Meanwhile, an entire generation faces housing that's unattainable. He's failed to deliver in nearly a decade as PM. Polyev understands concrete measures are needed now to increase housing supply. No more fancy accords that don't lead to actual construction. Trudeau clearly lacks the leadership to solve the housing crisis. His parade of flimsy agreements without follow-through proves he's more concerned with appearances than real progress. Yet despite his endless promises, prices continue to skyrocket out of control. Trudeau's lack of concrete action has utterly failed to rein in housing costs. Until that changes, housing will remain frustratingly out of reach for Canadians. 
At the end, it's a blistering critique of a prime minister who has completely lost control. While capable leaders like Danielle Smith and Pierre Polyev work diligently to advance their provinces, Trudeau takes Canada down a reckless path to disaster. His hypocritical climate policies are failing citizens and the economy alike. Trudeau's spendthrift budgeting leaves us unprepared for the looming crisis, and he stokes needless divisions instead of seeking national unity. On issue after issue, Trudeau flounders as others take action. His endless housing announcements achieve nothing as prices skyrocket out of reach. He makes outrageously false claims about political opponents to obscure his own failures, and Trudeau angrily dodges accountability at every turn. The contrast is clear as day. Competent premiers like Smith and Polyev are ready to lead Canada forward. Meanwhile, Trudeau drives this country into the ground with alarming speed. His circus of chaos has reached absurd new heights. Trudeau is plummeting rapidly as leaders like Smith, Polyev, and more rise up to fill the leadership vacuum he created. The breaking point has arrived. Trudeau's epic unraveling is his own doing. And if he doesn't change course sharply, his staggering downfall will only accelerate further. The time has come for real leadership in Ottawa. Leadership ready to unite Canadians, not divide us. Leadership ready to tackle challenges head-on, not run and hide when called out. Leadership that puts the national interest first, not vain political ambition. Justin Trudeau had his chance and squandered it in epic fashion. Now Canada needs to turn the page on this damaging, disastrous prime ministership. Working together, we can heal our nation and build a brighter future. But it begins by saying enough is enough. Trudeau has failed as a leader. Now he must step aside. The time for change is now. Well, that's all for now. Do you think empty rhetoric and virtue signaling make for good leadership? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.